Um, welcome, welcome, welcome. Happy Friday to everyone. Um, we are very excited, and by we, I mean Northern Place Center and our, the greater ceramics community. We all um, are really excited to be together with you, um, whether it's live or later when you get to view this video. We are so excited to have you tuning in and joining us as we get to know Christina Erives better. We're very, very excited to have or as one of our uh, guests in Sika artists, as an APF artist, it's gonna be so much, like we're gonna have so much fun over the next year. Um, and I've been really pleased and excited to be able to see in person these ceramic pieces. They are so, I keep using the word tasty. They're really tasty. Like um, they look so tasty, they feel tasty. It's, maybe it's not the perfect word, but that is what comes to mind. Um, and I think you may understand why. We're gonna see some pictures. Um, I, and Ravis is in LA, right? Living, living, working uh, yeah. as an Mexican American artist working primarily ceramics. I'm reading from your artist statement. Uh, it is, she, uh, explores narratives around food and the concept of contemporary womanhood. Um, and for me, I was like, wow, it's really easy to forget how gendered individual food items can be visually just because they're part of our everyday, right? Um, but then when I thought about language, it's like, oh, well, language really genders some words sometimes and can really gender some food item words sometimes, which is really interesting. And it's something that is really easy to ignore, but it's ever present too. So I'm really, I'm really interested to hear more and learn more. Um, Christina has her MFA, her MA, her BFA, um, and has attended California State U University, Northridge, and Penn State University, and was a Victor Spinsky Award um, winner from Inseca in 2017. So this is not the first Inseca rodeo. Many we're in, we're into many rodeos of, of the clay world, and uh, very excited though to have Christina here with us as a artist gallery talk, Zoom talk. I don't know, not exactly sure what we should call it this time around, but we're so excited to learn about um, kind of familiar and not familiar forms and to hear your interpretation and how that takes form in your work. Um, so without further ado, I will stop talking. We'll, we'll, you know, give the metaphysical mic over to Christina. And uh, if you wanted to say anything, of course, but then feel free to share your screen whenever that works Great. for you. Awesome. Thanks so much, Allison. Um, thanks for joining <laughs> and thanks for having me here um, doing virtual in Sika. So I, I did prepare a bunch of images because I thought that would be fun to look at pictures because we're visual people, I think. <laughs> Here's my slideshow. <laughs> so um, I wanted to talk about, I want to share images um, about my work in general from the past six years or so. Um, and that's about the time I've been out of grad school and mostly doing residencies. And I have sort of two bodies of work that I want to share. I have this large installation work, and then I have um, these uh, smaller object works. And they both come from the similar intentions of me wanting to create like vibrant, nourishing work. And I think tasty is a good word. <laughs> so I'm always <laughs> making myself so hungry in the studio. Um, so I think what has stood out to me most since entering the field of ceramics is the community of people. Clay has the ability to bring about this strong power of connection as it pulls together people together, uh, people together from all over the world and connects us to a tradition that will always be part of our past, present, and future. And as a material, it offers us so much malleability, giving us the opportunity to share our individual stories in such a beautiful way as it takes on an endless possibility of color, shape, and form. And this image right here is uh, from a demo I did years ago that felt really special because everyone got to sculpt their own piece and share their own story with me. And I think one of my main goals as an artist, and probably for many artists, is finding another way to communicate and connect with people. So for me, my pieces often stem from my identity as a you know Mexican-American Chicana and my personal family story. And my interest in creating these first objects sort of arose from my fear of being disconnected from these things uh, that were distanced by migration and sort of diluted through generations. And language was especially a struggle for me that I would often avoid communicating altogether as a child. Now, I never felt confident in my vocabulary in either Spanish or English. And I think it's part of what drew me into art 
I felt like a sense of comfort communicating abstractly through a physical and visible, visual vocabulary. Um, and food was my main point of departure. It's what defined my identity the most in, in finding my voice in ceramics. And I, I really love how we can relate to different foods and how we're able to share it as an extension of ourselves, enjoy its endless mix of flavors and it, how it can reflect our tastes and where we are from. Um, and so I grew up in the San Fernando Valley in Los Angeles, California. Uh, I have 11 brothers and sisters. <laughs> Um, and I'm, I'm here now in, in this area um, because of COVID <laughs> um, to be near my family, which is great. Um, but I think growing up with such an abundance of people and my mom always buying these large quantities of food to feed us all uh, is what subconsciously drew me into the style of my work, where I always wanted to include more and more food objects like there could never be enough. And so I came up with these ideas that my installations would never be finished. They could grow and change each time I set them up. Um, much like a scene in any home that changes from day to day and event to event, these table still lives would get taken down and rearranged uh, and new objects would come into place. So this ceramic table um, has taken a tour in multiple places and everything you see is earthenware clay um, and comes apart piece by piece. And then on the inside, of the ceramic table is a wooden frame for support. And my mom would often uh, say this phrase for me growing up, uh, panza llena corazón contento, which means full belly, happy heart. And I like to let that guide my work a lot. Um, it's sort of like my mantra to always make something happy, fun, vibrant, you know, fulfilling, nourishing. And I hope that's visible in both like the installation work and like the small individual works that you have at Northern Clay Center right now. Um, this is a close-up of a fruit stand that I made alongside that table installation. In general, I've always been drawn into building many objects at a time and then gradually starting to collect and arrange and rearrange these objects into various compositions. Um, and the table setting, I think, by, has been probably my favorite but by far. <laughs> I've always liked the idea of food being passed around merged with the concept of these stories and memories being passed around, represented through these various objects. And this is actually one of the first tables that I ever built. Um, and it was before I started using color in my work. Um, and it's a really huge earthenware table. It's like 10 feet long by four feet. And it was, each plate was about someone in my family. Um, so I have these certain objects that I like to revisit like these tables. Um, but oftentimes when I get started in the studio, uh, I just have to start making whatever is around me to get rolling because I feel like the more objects I'm able to create in my studio, the more time I can spend learning from them and playing with them, warping, merging, twisting them in different ways, much like a story that gets stretched over time and it's telling, such as like a fish someone caught could just get bigger and bigger or the stack of tortillas could just get taller and taller. I enjoy these investigations and building one thing to discover another thing. And ceramics is such a tedious process that you almost always have to tend to make extra pieces to get what you want. And I think seeing these quantities in the studio has also influenced the way I compose these larger works, always filling scenes up with multiples. And it's also become this sort of habit of mine oftentimes. When I get into a stu the studio, I like to warm up my hands with a familiar object such as a tortilla or a fried egg, and I just like, let them pile up alongside, alongside these other works until they end up in, into their own installations, taking over spaces. And this, this is one of my signature tiles, the ceramics cassette tape, which you have a couple at Northern Clay Center. Um, and I try to make a few of these in every batch of work as well. And I, yeah, I really enjoy <laughs> including humor more and more into my studio practice and any little thing that can make a laugh or a smile. Humor creates a very important emotion. And when I can evoke the feeling, a feeling from my audience, it makes the work feel more successful to me. Um, you know, there's a lot of heavy things going on in the world, so I'd like to add more light things if I can. Um, and I really enjoy a good pun once in a while, <laughs> and I like when people pick up on them. So this is my the first pun I made in ceramics is a ceramics cassette. Um, these are some sponges, clay sponges. You know, I think they're kind of funny too because a sponge is, you know, made to pick up dirt, and these are made from dirt. 
There's a yellow clay sponge. Um, and here's some jugs. Um, I think I made them for an Insika show in 2019. And I think they're funny, you know, because they're jugs and they have nipples. So they're like jugs with jugs. Um, but they also carry a strong meaning for me when I think of my mom raising and breastfeeding 12 babies. <laughs> and um, just the nourishment of being a mother in general, which is pretty intense, amazing thing. Um, so this piece was about her filling these 12 cups. And this is sort of another comical one for me personally, too, because I have this like vague memory of associating this cheese with cartoons and then seeing it for the first time as a kid at the market under a deli glass in such awe and amusement and thinking like, oh, wow, cheese with holes really does exist. <laughs> like I thought it was a cartoon. <laughs> So I had this extra wall to fill in a show um, at the Archie Bray, and I thought, why not just cut up a bunch of <laughs> slices of cheese? And, and it made me so happy to see this come to life. It was just such a simple idea, and then just to see it cover the wall in this bright yellow. Um, I just think, like, life is so short, so you got to make and do what makes you happy. And these are just some more fun, bright color pieces from the show, some lemonade cups and lemons. And some planters with the same style of my tile work. Um, and then my ashtrays. So there's an old phrase in Spanish, después de un buen taco, un buen tobacco, which means after a good taco, have a good tobacco. Um, and I'm not a smoker and I don't want to promote smoking, but um, it's an image I find myself revisiting often in various uh, iterations. And I guess I like to think of it as like, uh, a soft message or when it turns into these clouds and then steam, it shows this movement and cycle and it's sort of like a daydream image for me in my work. This is an installation I made during a teaching residency in Las Cruces, New Mexico. Um, and a lot of my work, you know, stems from very specific stories at times or, or the scenery that I get immersed in while doing these residencies. Um, but my end goal is really just to create these visually rich installations that hopefully anyone can approach with a bit of curiosity and interaction. Um, and I think like visual representation sort of comes and goes in my work, much like a, that like story that gets stretched over time and it's telling. I want my pieces to carry that same sense of altered information while still carrying the heart of its narrative. Um, and it also, I feel like, is an excuse for me to play between realism and abstraction. <laughs> So these are some various pieces throughout the years. Some salsa being prepped. Some sandwich bookends. Okay, and then moving on to my tiles. So uh, I think this was only just a few years ago when I started making these tiles in 2018, I think. Um, but it feels like so much longer. <laughs> But I started making these tiles while I was at the Archie Bray Foundation and my initial idea for this body of work uh, just sort of sprouted from me not wanting to lug those big tables anymore <laughs> because it was so much work. And I found it, I think it's kind of helpful in like pushing a new body of work is giving yourself a new rule or challenge because that new rule inevitably forces change in your work. So my new rule that I gave myself this year or that year was to make flat things under 12 inches. <laughs> And it grew into this hu huge wall installation and that's been changing into different compositions with each install. Um, but it's actually been just as much work in the end, <laughs> I feel like. Um, but I'm still very excited about the series. So this is one of the first like, compositions and I kept up with the idea of it being an, an evolving installation like the table. But this time I decided to um, make it available in parts because I wanted it to be more accessible for people to take work home. Because for a long time, I just had these large tables that no one could take home. They could only <laughs> look at it and go. So I started trying to split things up and I felt like this was more versatile in that way. Um, and it's been fun to see how uh, it's spread into different homes. And as people like send me pictures of where they have it installed in their house and which pieces they chose and what they identified with and the new compositions that they kind of create in their homes um, and like arrange their smaller sets. It's really fun to see. Um, and then lately I've just been, I've just been kind of making, you know, individual tiles without any final composition in mind. Um, 
And so these are some these are some various tiles. Um, <coughs> excuse me. So all these tiles are individually cut and carved and inlay with black under glaze and then scraped with a metal rib. I know there's like a less dustier ways of doing Mishima or inlay, um, but I really like the surface that I get from scraping with the metal rib because it kind of reveals some of the grog and it has like a sharper edge. So I'm, <laughs> I just wear a mask when I do it, but uh, it's, I know people are always like, oh, you can do this a better way, but I like this way. <laughs> Um, and most of them that I use underglaze on the surface, only just recently in the past few months, I've been working with more of those thicker, glossy glaze, glazes, um, uh, which you have, I think, both at uh, Northern Clay Center right now. Here's some glossier ones, the fish, my, my golden horse. <laughs> But so I, I like the evolution of this work because we're always sort of evolving as people and I enjoy that sense of growth and opportunity to become better versions of ourselves. And so I like that these uh, installations don't ever have to be fixed or stuck in one composition. I can keep editing and removing pieces and, um, or adding pieces uh, and letting it grow into whatever I want it to become, however I'm feeling in the moment. So um, I really like that part that I can keep changing it. And um, finally, these are some more functional pieces that have branched off from my tiles. And this is sort of new for me too, because I don't often make a lot of functional work. Um, but now that I've like, I've drawn all these images and I have this sort of catalog of images at my hand and I, I, everything I draw and carve, I save the sketch in a binder. So now I have all these sort of templates that I can refer back to. And I've, lately I've been playing with them and seeing how I can make these sort of flat-sided functional pieces and then getting more ideas, you know, just having this template book to work from that I've created. Um, so I'm, I think there will be a lot more pieces like this in the next, in the coming year. Um, in my flower and water vases, you have a few at Northern Clay Center, my face vase, little tiger tray. One of my friends actually got one of these, the first tiger trays that I made. And she told me that she uh, she puts her little kitty treats on the tray for a kitty every day. So often that now that when she ever she pulls out the, the tiger tray, <laughs> that he gets excited like he knows it's gonna be, <laughs> the treat is about to come. And I really love that, how, that association that my her kitty is getting excited whenever my tray comes out. <laughs> um, and I think that's that's it. So um, and feel free to follow me on Instagram um, if you have any more questions. Um, I always try to keep links to all my shows on my Instagram profile page. So that's the best way to find whatever I'm connected to or if you need to reach me, um, feel free to. <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing. Oh, it's so fun. We, we have a little bit of time still, so we might be able to, if people have questions, uh, we would love to have them. Uh, and I know, and for those of you who view us later, you know, uh, you can follow Christina and I'm sure, uh, you know, as you follow through Instagram, ask questions that way too, um, right? Um, thank you so much for sharing. I thought of a couple other words I can use. Graphic. Graphic. Luscious. Luscious, that's a good one. I think it's closely related to tasty. It was, you know, I was just like, oh, they just look so mm, tasty. Tasty. Again, I'm back at tasty. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I also, I, you used a really good pun, and I don't know if you noticed. You said they were more versatile. The tiles were more versatile. Ah, oh, my gosh. I didn't even catch that one. <laughs> continue to, please continue with that. Oh, my gosh. I have so many questions. It looks like Steph, Steph's raising her hand. Steph's got a question. Yeah, I have a question. Um, I really, it really piqued my interest when you mentioned when you were at, I think you said Archie Bray and you implemented that rule for yourself of like flat and under 12 inches. Um, and I'm really interested to hear if you have any other kind of thoughts about the balance of freedom and rule making in your work. And if that's something you do often, if it's a cycle and, and maybe like where, where you implement those rules and where you enjoy freedom in your practice and things like that? 
Yeah, I guess I I don't do that very often. It's just once in a while I feel like I'm getting stuck in a certain way and like I could feel like um, at that point when I gave that rule, I was just had that table for so long and it was just be, starting to become this burden on me. <laughs> like every time someone wanted it for a show, I'm like, oh my God, I don't want to do this anymore. <laughs> I mean, I love sharing it, but it, it, was, it was just so much work getting it, you know, across states. And um, and I every time I set it up, I mean, I could just like set it up the same time as it is um, as I left it the previous time. But every time I see it, I'm like, oh, I want to make changes. I can't like, it needs, I, you know, I feel different about it. So I like want to add more pieces to it. Um, so I think every time I'm feeling a little stuck and I need a little change is when I think like, okay, I'm going to do something different. I'm going to, you know, at that time I thought like, I'm going to make it easier on myself. I'm going to make smaller work, easy to pack and flat. Um, and it still was a lot of work, but um, it was good to feel a little bit of a change. Um, and it kind of led to these other things. And I think other changes were like, you know, in grad school, I didn't, I never put anything on my surfaces. I just left all my clay raw. And then once I left grad school, I was like, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to just start bringing color. And then that just like, I haven't like left color since. So um, it's, it's not that often. It's just like, every time I think I need a, a big switch. <laughs> That's great. I know um, one of my friends, our friends, Amanda Dobratz, she will, she has this rule where she's like only five colors. Like I have to limit myself to five colors. Um, since you have adopted color into your repertoire, do you have any rule about how many colors you're allowed to use? Um, I have never limited myself on color once I started using color. <laughs> um, yeah, I have like bottles all over my studio and it's, it's maybe I should just to kind of like be more efficient and kind of help make things easier on myself. But um, it's, I've just kind of like exploded <laughs> with color everywhere. Yeah, I think that's okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, Steph is in the sales gallery. So she's, um, who just asked your, asked a question. She's in the NCC sales gallery. So she's there packing your work up. Oh. <laughs> um, that's awesome. I really liked how, I think there are quite a few among the ceramics community for whom public speaking and communicating that way is part of why they were drawn in. So it's really fun to hear, you know, that that is also a thread in your life. <laughs> Speak through form. <laughs> I know, but then we still end up having to speak anyways. <laughs> yeah. um, was I was thinking of some of the pieces you uh, earlier in your slideshow that were that were colored, but was it in the raw clay? Um, like some of your, I was thinking of that jalapeno or poblano pepper uh, basket um, that had the three-dimensional jalapeno and poblanos. Was that color in the clay or was that? So actually those pieces, um, I once fired to temperature and then I used um, house paints. Yeah, <laughs> flat house paints. I, a lot, I think actually in that whole like table installation, um, half the colors were like under glazes and half the colors were just from house paints just because I wasn't getting all the colors that I wanted and some of them I wanted to be like very specific like those chiles um, really needed to be that specific green otherwise they just didn't look right to me um, and so I blended the two and I feel like the flat house paints it was very similar to the surface of the velvet under glazes so I felt like they mixed well together. I love that I love some of the cold surface things that can be done it's really fun yeah when it's not functional it's like and I think of them as like paintings too when I'm like putting them together I just like it's just like a picture to me <laughs> I'm trying to get this pretty picture well and your colors do like feel like a body of work like the colors are all interrelated and partially because you know it's how they exist in the real world but like also they just like they feel like they are like a family of colors so 
I think you're doing something right. <laughs> Thank you. Quite a few things. That's that for sure. I really enjoy personally. Um, well, great. Uh, we don't have to. We don't have to keep everyone here. We've uh, we've gotten. 26 minutes of your time um, and we super appreciate that if there are any final questions feel free to ask uh, you can type it in the chat also you know follow up follow on um, on the Instagram on whatever uh, social media platform you utilize uh, follow Christina uh, we're really excited we'll, we'll be sharing more images of her work too in the coming weeks, months. Woohoo! It's going to be a very fun year. Um, and check out check out the website. Support her. Um, and we do have uh, two more gallery artist talks today too. So if you are able to tune in again, uh, our next one is in uh, about an hour. I believe we're at two twenty Eastern time, three twenty Central time. It's I'm trying to keep it all straight. And then we have one at 3 p.m. slash 4 p.m. after that, just 10 minutes later with uh, first Daniel Velasquez and then Randy Shoot. Um, very excited to have them with us too. And thank you so much, Christina. It's been a pleasure. I really am looking forward to continuing to get to know you through your work and through all the things we do together in the next year. Yes. Thank you so much. This was great. <laughs> nice to share.